All right, my friends, Brian here with VetSource checking in today where I'm actually uh, stuck deep again in doing some teardown work. So since we've kind of been focusing on this the last few weeks as I've been doing this kind of catch up, I figure what I do is kind of go over differentials today uh, or C3 differentials, if you will. So what you're looking at right here is a C3 Corvette differential. Uh, this and actually this is a C2 style as well. So this would be the differential style that was made or produced from 1963 uh, up until 1979. And then in 1980, they went to the aluminum case differential, which I haven't been able to feature one of those, but I'll probably get to that pretty soon. Um, so this would be, again, a, a differential style that encompassed uh, 63, 73, uh, almost 20 years of production for the Corvettes, about 16, 17 years of production. So. Looking at this, you can see this is obviously a steel case, unlike the later ones that I've featured, like the C5s where they're an aluminum case, and those are actually a uh, transaxle setup. So this is the first iteration of the first use of the independent rear suspension at Corvettes. Um, so you can see here, obviously, your input drive shaft comes into the front there, and of course from the sides here. Now the whole case here is steel. Uh, there's no um, aluminum parts on this at all. It's a pretty heavy unit. It weighs close to probably 100 pounds, 85, 87 pounds, uh, even more with this rear cover on it. So this is a differential unit uh, that actually is from a big block car, 427 or 454. And you can tell again by these uh, caps here, these heavy duty caps, this would be the main difference between your big block cars and your small block cars. Uh, small block cars just have the regular U strap like they all all do. Pardon me for a minute. Hold on. I'll shut my door. There. And um, and these heavy duty caps are built to handle the greater torque output of the 427 motors. So you can see this differential came from a 427. Now the other way you can identify these at, even with just straight up uh, looking at your differential ends, your yoke housings is on the bottom of the differential. Let's see if I can one hand this and get to it so you can see it before we take this rear cover off. And I'm spilling oil everywhere. Okay. Let's just put that down there for now. And then what we'll do is we'll set this down so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Okay, so on the bottom of every differential from this era is a stamping. And because I've kind of already pulled the rear cover off of this one, let's see if I can see the codes here. Okay, so my codes for this differential are right across here. And you see that uh, AZ, and I'm having trouble seeing this myself, Warner Gear, and then my date code is in 1968, of course. Now I'm looking at this upside down. I think this is a 10 October of 1968, if I remember correctly. So that AZ code is specifically what you're looking for as far as that's what we call a heavy-duty uh, 427 differential code. So this would be a 355 differential right here. So if you're ever looking at a Corvette differential at a swap meet or something, you need one, um, you can always come and flip over the bottom and just take even a steel wheel brush with you if you have one and you can kind of see that AZ code and then of course 68, 10 of 68. So that tells you this is actually from an early 1969 Corvette, this unit here. Um, and this is uh, pretty much on all the years from 63 up until... Um, Heck, even the, the C4s have this differential code stamped into them. Um, the C4s is a little bit different. It's stamped. It's actually laser etched into the bottom. So what we're going to do real quick here, and you can see, of course, there's our part number here of our main case up here in the front. And the uh, back plate, back cover will have also a, a uh, casting number as well. So let's go ahead... I'm going to take this off so we can look at the inside of the guts here and see what kind of shape this is in. Now this is just basically straight up 5 8 bolts 
perimeter bolts that hold this back cover on. And I've already pre-loosened these and drained it so we don't make a mess. And of course, there's our casting number there for our back cover as well. So there's a lot of casting numbers involved in these. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off here. And that way we can expect the gears. Now I saved and set this one aside for another one of the 427 cars that we're working on here, our long-term projects because uh, I've got one that needs a correct differential in it. Over the years, these differentials didn't always survive. So sometimes they got replaced with the wrong differentials. Whatever was on hand, people would get or put in there. So I've got one car that needs the correct differential. And this one happens to be actually not only the correct uh, differential housing date code, but it's also the correct gear ratio, which is really amazing because you don't come across it very often so you can see there's the inside of our case heavy heavy definitely heavy duty rear cover there it's uh all cast iron basically so again once you take that cover off you're going to be able to see in here now a lot of corvettes from this era are uh, limited slip differentials uh, this one included but a lot of them are not they came without limited slip um, so they're not a technically all the way together posi, they're just a limited slip differential. Now, if you've never looked at the inside of one of these cases before, of course this one's pretty filthy inside. Um, this is grungy, it's been sitting for many, 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 many years. Um, you can see I've got my ring gear here, and then of course my center clutch pack set up here. Now this one here, Actually looks pretty good. Our uh, our C clamps are in good shape on this one. A lot of times on Corvettes, what you're gonna look for too, that C clamp that's right in that corner right there is broken, and these differential these yokes will just come straight out of here. So my uh, my C clamps are good on this one. Let's see about this one here. Yeah, that one's good too. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking to see. Now I know already I've counted, obviously, the amount of times the uh, input shaft spins versus the amount of yokes, but I'm just looking for verification on my gear set here, and, okay, there we go. Should have brought my carburetor cleaner out here with me. Okay, there's our GM stamping right there. And in there, of course, I'm getting more light on the camera than I am in the other. There's our original GM part number right there. So that is a 3783188, I think that is. 3783188, yep. And let's see. Nine thirty seconds. I think that's my gear input. No, because I've got a three fifty five here. Bear with me for a second. Nine GM one oh six nine thirty two. That's a three. Oh yes, that's right. So that 9.30 seconds, I'm sorry, in my head I was doing crazy math. So, so you've got 9 divided, or 32 divided by 9 is going to give you right at 3.55. So 9 times 3 is 27, uh, which gives you left over 5, 50. And 9 times 5 is 40. Um, so we're right at about 3.55 there. So what that means is you've got 32 teeth on this ring gear here and then on the other gear the input gear you've got nine teeth so what that gives you is the 355 uh, rear gear ratio axle and sometimes these will have there we go see my date code right there GM1 1968 so this is just trivia type stuff now of course looking at this gear set here um, I have to admit, this one looks to be in pretty good shape. It's grungy inside. 
but it's actually not that bad. So, um, let's see here. Yeah, no, that's really not too bad. So, this is a pretty good unit here, actually. I'm glad I set this aside. Uh, this was a big block car I dismantled many, many years ago and kind of left this sit until I had time to get to it. So you can see here, rear differentials are actually just pretty much a straightforward, simple type of operation. We're looking at a 90 degree transferring of power, uh, obviously from center line of the car, uh, parallel running backwards, and then we shift power 90 degrees to our rear wheels. So that's pretty much all I'm looking for is to make sure there's no broken teeth here, nothing of that nature. And it all looks pretty darn good. So, I think we're going to call this one a successful uh, differential here for the moment. I don't see anything. I'm going to clean it up a little bit more off camera, but I'm pretty thrilled with this. So, in a future video, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and throw this one back in the 427 car uh, that we've been playing with. And I haven't really mentioned that one very much. It's kind of got it in storage. But we'll put that back in there so it's back to being correct. Um, of course, I got a couple of interesting, scored a couple of uh, sway bars for big blocks earlier today too. So those are both 427 sway bars. A lot of that's just getting in the weeds about is determining which Corvettes are real 427s and which ones are fakes. But I won't go into that in this video. So anyway, short video today guys, but I just wanted to touch base with you. Uh, keep up our weekly presence here and let you guys know I'm not forgetting about you. Got a few other things on the fire. Uh, i got to pull out a C4 heater core next week. I'm going to dismantle a 96 dash cluster. We're going to work on a 67 427 some more. So I've got some definitely some more videos coming your way. So uh, keep your notifications up for uh, the lookout for when I have time to get some more stuff out. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys next time then. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys.